Paul. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our annual meeting 2020. Um, uh, like all things in 2020, this does not look like it usually would. We usually have it in May, uh, and we invite the public into our space. Um, but uh, we kept kicking it down the road a month after a month, hoping that um, we would have the spigot turned up enough to uh, allow for perhaps an open house um, on the green and, and uh, rolling out our, our lovely new um, quarters. But um, at this point, given that there are not many pages left in the calendar, we determined we best, better just have a remote annual meeting 2020. Welcome all. I'm going to mute my mic and hand it over to our esteemed executive director, Rob Chapman. Yeah. And I do believe he will be um, presenting staff and uh, Orca's past, present, and future. Enjoy, all. All right. Thanks, Mike. So before I go to my presentation and switch over to sharing my screen, why don't we do the staff introductions first? So um, we have at, here at Orca three full-time staff at the moment, of which I am one. And for those of you who don't know, I have been working as of November 1st for nine years for Orca Media. Wow. Uh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a long history and background in, in community media. I, I think I started in 1992 as a production technician at the public access station in Burlington. Uh, it was called Channel 15 at the time. And then for a number of years, I was running it. My first job as executive director was a, an access center in Monrovia, California. So in 97, I moved out there and got my first taste of being an executive director. And then in 2000, I was offered a job to come back to Burlington and take Channel 15 and set up a nonprofit, which we turned into Vermont Community Access Media, which I ran for 10 years. And then in 2011, you guys were so kind as to hire me to come be executive director of Orca Media. And I've been doing it ever since. It's been wonderful. It's a great community. I enjoy being here and having my family be raised. My daughters are now almost out of school. Well, one of them is out of school in college, and the other one is now a junior at MHS. And it's been a wonderful experience getting to know Montpelier and Central Vermont again. I was born and raised. Well, I wasn't born, but I was raised in Stowe. Um, so coming back to the mountains after having so many years in the valley has been wonderful. So that's my background. We also have with us our production manager, Zach Zorn. Zach, you want to say a few things about your background? and? I think we had a My question. Background. Yeah, we hit the lovely cinder block wall you have back there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up in Montpelier. Um, I did uh, internships in video production. Uh, I went to Linden State College and got my degree in um, uh, television production. Then I worked um, in uh, a Barry at the cable access station there for about five years before starting um, here at Orca. I think, I think it's been five years. It has been five years. Is it? Yep. Yeah. And I'm wearing my mask because I'm in the office still. So we, we wear our, our masks and we've been cleaning a lot. And um, so a little bit about my job. Is anything that's related to uh, equipment or the software, basically, uh, is what I'm in charge of. So a lot of what I do is work with the uh, access producer, the people off the street that come in, and um, I just help them with the technical side of delivering their, their message they want to do. And different people have... Uh, different things uh, that they feel is important to them. So I don't, uh, you know, say my opinion or anything, but just focus on the technical side. Uh, the other thing is, or a lot of what we do is the municipal meetings and school boards and state house coverage. So for that, I have um, 
assistant editors. So I sort of manage them and delegate out which people um, work on which projects and then go over uh, to make sure that's all working good and getting through. So there's a lot of media management. Um, and then the studio shoots, I uh, usually schedule people for the studio. Um, and most of those I'll do. Um, and it's a lot of, uh, do a lot of communication with the, the access users. Uh, so a lot of emailing back and forth and, and being on the phone and, and helping them. Um, I think that's it. Great. You that's think a lot. Of anything else. <clears throat> yeah. And that's enough that you do. Uh, uh, I guess um, what we've been doing with COVID stuff is um, because a lot of these meetings are on, on the wall. So instead of sending a camera operator to capture them, we just capture them, um, do a screen recording. So most of the meetings are a screen recording. And um, so I'll stay and get those started. And then we edit those almost like uh, a meeting was in person. But it's just a screen recording. Great. Thanks, Zach. And then we have with us our content manager. Her name is Jen Ahn. She is coming up on almost two years uh, uh, being employed at Orca Media. So, Jen, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. So, I am the content manager. I was, I was raised in California and did most of my time there. And I come from a nonprofit background doing data and information systems for a special ed group in California. So I am happy with data and the content management um, manager job fits in well with that. So what I do here is I manage the content. I make sure it's up on YouTube, that it's up on our website, and it gets scheduled on our channels and make sure that the meta is um, formatted so that we can look at the data and see you know, what trends we might be doing in terms of meetings or how much content we might have. So I guess that's about it. And I do whatever tech needs might need to be done. So um, if there's network issues, I can take a look at that. If there's computer issues, I can take a look at that. And it's been primarily serving as backup for some of the technical stuff that Zach might need or Rob might need. And um, I guess that's it. So. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. So now I'm, I've got a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to try to share my screen. So let's see if this works, if we can get the tech working. Well, let's try that again. OK. How's that look? Are you seeing my screen, guys? It's astounding. <laughs> that looks good. So this is the annual meeting from October 27th. Uh, staff and board, we've just gone through my staff. So here again is Rob Chapman is the executive director, Zach Zorn is the production manager, and Jen Ahn is our content manager. And then as the board members, uh, we have Mike Abadi as the chair, and Carlos Diaz is our secretary. Michael Doyle, who's not with us tonight, uh, is our treasurer. And we have also Susan Bettman, David Connor, Rachel Feldman, and CJ Stumpf. Uh, we'll get a chance at the end of this uh, annual meeting for them to talk and tell us a little bit about themselves and how much they love Orca, but we'll go through this PowerPoint presentation. So as Michael talked about what we're working on to sort of like go through the past, so this is the actual annual meeting for the 2019. So the <laughs> finances are, are looking at the 29 financials. Um, so uh, just to quickly go over some of the revenue, just over $350,000 we get from uh, Comcast, from cable operating. Uh, that's 5% uh, of their gross receipts on cable services. Uh, some of you may not know this, but we do not get any income from their cable, cable modem service, from their modem or internet services. It's strictly their cable services. Uh, and then the cap capital is uh, money that also comes. We get 0.9% of their gross revenue 
for equipment and other capital expenditures. Uh, we brought in, in 2019, uh, $36,680 in production and duplication revenue. Most of that is production from um, municipal towns who are actually paying for additional meetings beyond their select board or their school board. So if they have planning commissions or um, design review or uh, any other meeting they want might want covered, we uh, charge for that. We also charge for streaming services. So if an, uh, an event is being streamed by somebody, some people might ask us to go and cover an event. We've done like the co-op annual meeting. They pay for the streaming services that we are included with that. We also got $550 in donations. Uh, we made about just over $5,500 in interest. And then last year, we also got a, a one-time sum from a Comcast settlement, which I'll talk a little bit later uh, in this presentation for a total of almost $450,000 is our annual budget. And then on the expenses side, um, we get almost $270,000 uh, goes into covering uh, staff and compensation. That includes the salaries, that includes uh, uh, workers' compensation, health insurance, and everything that's associated with having people man the facilities. We do have uh, almost $7,000 in consultants and services. This is basically lawyers' fees, accountants, uh, and anything like that. Office expenses and insurance have lumped into one thing, which is almost $15,000. Uh, that's um, business insurance. Uh, if we need a new, any copy office supplies or anything that, you know, some of that it actually, you know, uh, well, that's not 2019, but in 2020, things that are helping with COVID uh, protocols are also included in that. And then our utilities from 2019 are just over $11,000. Uh, a lot of that was electricity. Um, and then telephone and internet are probably the two things that are included in that. In 2019, we spent a little over $8,000 in travel and mileage. This pays for if any of my staff goes to a conference, that's included in that, as well as if any camera operator is using their vehicle to get to a meeting or to something they have to tape. Uh, miscellaneous expenditures are just over $7,000. And then the equipment and capital is $70,000. Does, that doesn't—that does include our rent. So we do capitalize our rent, as well as uh, cameras, any tech supplies we might need, for just over just about just over $387,000 in expenses. So we were really conscious of keeping our budget low. Uh, it looks like a big difference, but if you take out that Comcast settlement of twenty-three thousand, then you'll see it's probably about half of a you know about that same amount that we saved in keeping our eye on the budget and trying to save some costs. So uh, that's the finances for twenty nineteen, and then we have some data on our programming and equipment usage. So programming numbers in twenty nineteen. We had uh, 1,253 different pieces of content that were created for Orca Media by local producers and by our, uh, ourselves, as well as 19 PSAs and bumpers, short form stuff. And then uh, we also, if you were watching the channel, you saw um, 933 pieces of content that were imported from other Vermont sources. This is basically through the Vermont Media Exchange. Other access centers across the state will put uh, content or videos that they feel uh, people might be interested in, and we download them and play them on the channel. And then uh, about 161 um, pieces of content from, from outside of Vermont. Um, and then equipment usage. Uh, in 2019, we had uh, 139 uh, checkouts of equipment. This does not include staff. This is just access users who are grabbing our equipment and taking it out for their own productions. And then we also had a number for studio usage of 262 people times that producers used our studio to produce stuff. Uh, there are a number of different shows that use the studio, uh, Vote for Vermont, all things LGBTQ are some of our regular shows that come in and regularly produce a half an hour. And of course, that's all for 2019, so that doesn't reflect any downtime from the 2020 COVID response. In 2019, there was also the Comcast settlement, and this was uh, the, the state of Vermont issued Comcast a certificate of public good. Uh, some of the terms they did not like, and so they decided to bring uh, to sue the state of Vermont in federal court. Uh, and the Vermont Access Network was able to join in that suit to defend a lot of the stuff in the certificate of public good, or CPG, had to do with access uh, funding and access. Uh, use of capacity. 
So we decided to join in that. Uh, and then as the suit proceeded, we got to a point where the judge says that you need to go in into settlement talks. So last summer, a uh, committee of Van that was working on the, on, the, on the CPG got into a room with Comcast and the state of Vermont and banged out a settlement. And we were actually able to get to a settlement agreement. And some of the things that we, or came out of that settlement agreed, agreement included, finally, we got access to the interactive program guide, which is something that the Vermont Access Network has been fighting for many years to get access to. This is, if you have cable, this is the program guide you, you look. And then before, none of our shows were in that program guide. It would just list Orca Media, public access or something like that. Um, and we felt it was necessary in order to be um, at, at a level of same as the other content providers to have our content listed on that. We do have to pay for that. It's uh, $100 a month for each channel. So we, we are absorbing that cost. But we were able to get to a point where we um, have access to that. The, the way we got to that was we had to all take new channel numbers. And so uh, at the beginning of this year, our channel numbers moved from 15, 16, and 17 to 1075, 1085, and 1095. So we've been working to try to get people to recognize that we are now in a different place on their channel lineup. And to help with that, the settlement also included money for rebranding, as well as to offset some of the costs for remote origination, which is basically the ability to go live from places in the community. This is something that the state of Vermont has always included in their CPG, and how to facilitate that had become very cost prohibitive in Comcast eyes using fiber. So many access centers have been uh, switching to an IP based delivery for remote origination. And we still wanted Comcast to support that. So we got to a number that they would agree to pay in support of that. And that's what the number you saw earlier in the financials. And then we also got the activation of a statewide high definition channel that is to be shared by the Vermont Access Network across the state and access centers. And I'll get to that a little bit later in the presentation. And then one of the, some of the big things we happened is we got to talking about how to save uh, money. And one of the things we came up with was an, a move. So we started exploring the possibility of a move to Vermont um, College of Fine Arts campus. Uh, and we found them to be enthusiastic and uh, um, we're, we're looking forward to being a, a great partner. So we were able to negotiate a lease and in the beginning of 2020, just before the pandemic hit, we were able to move our facilities up here to 62 Ridge Street at the college campus. And so just to show you a little bit of what it uh, looks like, I know that some of you haven't actually been able to come here. So uh, we're, we've got some pictures showing you. So this, of course, is the chapel and uh, administration building at the college. And we have a lovely shot of the green, uh, which is enjoyable to be able to go. And we have plenty of parking now up there. We used to have to park on the city streets, uh, meter to streets, but now we have plenty of parking. This is the actual building where, that we are in, the Stone Science Hall. Uh, and this is some of the office space. This is my, uh, my staff's office, and they are busy to work. We have a nice product placement in this picture where you can see the Clorox wipes in the foreground, knowing that we are COVID uh, savvy here at Orca Media. Here's our nice sofa and a lounge area uh, with the Orca stuffed whale and some Halloween candy in the shot. Our equipment room, uh, we're trying to organize. We, the opportunity, the move gave us the opportunity to sort of go through some of our equipment, uh, inventory it and improve it and get rid of the things that we don't use. So I've made a number of trips to the electronics um, depot in Barry and getting rid of some things that are 15, 20 years old. Uh, so we're trying to keep it neat and clean and utilized. Our edit suites, this is Jerome at one of our edit suites. We now have four edit suites. We just recently purchased a computer for the fourth edit suites, and we are now fully operational with full four edit suites uh, for anybody who wants to come in and use them. And we have our nice studio across the hall. This is what it looks like when it's uh, decked out with cameras and, and the desk. Uh, it's a little bit more space than our studio down at 89 Main Street. So that's uh, been a, uh, a plus. To have a little bit more elbow room storage for set pieces and stuff like that. Uh, as we said, we were here for about two weeks before we all went home on remote. So we've been gearing up this summer with some uh, shoots and we're getting back into utilizing the studio. Uh, we also have some hope in doing some new sets. Uh, we've been working on um, some designs to create some uh, standard sets for it. Uh, so we hope to be able to have that for you soon. We won't say more than that. 
We just want to, we think it'll look very nice and we hope that you will enjoy it when you do get to see it on your screen. And then this is just a shot looking into the uh, uh, edit. No, it's, it's the play out thing. And I had a nice reflection in the window of, of the college, so that was my last shot that I thought just to tie them both in together in one thing. Now we get into the COVID response. You know, in 2020, we are, the world has been dealing, the Orca Media as well as the rest of the world, was met with a challenging, challenging situation in, uh, I think, in the middle of March when the governor said shelter at home. Uh, we all worked uh, diligently to come, come up with a plan for working remotely. We were able to keep the full-time staff on. So Zach uh, was uh, working, editing from home. Uh, Jin set up the, the, the remote ability to, to run the computers here. Um, and then after I went through a quarantine section, I actually was up here working in my office by myself for most of April and May. Uh, and then in June, at the end of June, I think Zach started coming back and we started trying to open up um, the studio again. So we've been doing, um, working on our, uh, our COVID protocols, keeping it safe and keeping it responsible. Um, we also had to adapt to the virtual meetings as we talked, as Zach talked about, um, we don't send camera, many camera operators out into the field anymore. Most of it is just working at a computer, capturing a meeting, a Zoom meeting or whatever platform they're using and getting that turned around and on the channel. One of the big things that ORC has been able to help is the governor's press conference, which uh, began at COVID. So we've been able to stream those basically from, I think we were in the, into April when we started that. Uh, it's been really popular. It's raised the exposure of ORCA media. Uh, mainstream media is now using our fee feed. We get a, a shout out from Vermont Public Radio uh, when we do the, the uh, stream. Uh, it came about because part of the, the problems with the mainstream media is that they would cut after a certain time. Orca doesn't do that. We're there for the whole time. Uh, the governor's been very, the governor's office and administration has been very appreciative. And there are very many Vermonters who are appreciative and tune in. And we've seen our YouTube numbers go up drastically because of it. So we're benefiting from people's exposure and knowing that we're providing an important service to Vermonters in this COVID time. So that's been uh, something that we've done. And then we get into the new statewide community media channel. So uh, as I said, from the settlement, Comcast agreed to give us a statewide channel. So uh, it's been newly dubbed the, uh, the Vermont Community Television. Um, it's envisioned as a showcase for the best content from access centers across the state. Uh, it'll be managed by the Vermont Access Network. Uh, and Orca Media, Media is uniquely positioned uh, as an a important content provider because of the fact that the State House is in our footprint. Obviously, this is a statewide channel, so we're developing programming guidelines for what that means. And one of the prevailing ideas is that obviously the content has, has to be of statewide interest. And Many things coming out of Montpelier are of statewide interest. So I chair the committee for that statewide uh, channel, uh, and we're shepherding it forward. Uh, it's due to come um, right up on December 8th on ten channel 1070 on your channel lineup. So uh, keep an eye out for it. It should be it's coming very soon. And we're working, as I said, on branding elements. We finally came up with a name. It was not an easy process to come up with a name, but we finally settled on Vermont Community Television. So. As I said, look forward on channel 1070. Some other things that we've been trying to do is to expand our footprint. Uh, we are, uh, have begun working, uh, as uh, the board has uh, always said, you know, how do we better serve the communities that are not in Montpelier? Work Media is based in Montpelier, but we also serve uh, 14 other towns, including some larger population centers, which include Randolph and Waterbury. So we've identified those two communities as places that we'd like to get a, a better footprint in. And part of the way we're doing that is to work with the libraries. Uh, so we uh, have been talking with uh, the Kimball Library and uh, Randolph, as well as the Waterbury Library and staff about such things as producing their own content and, and developing protocols to be able to put equipment there for the members of the public to be able to take out and produce their content. There's some logistics that still need to be worked out. And this was something that we were working on before the pandemic hit. So we put, a, you know, we had obviously had to put a, a hold on it while we dealt with the pandemic. But starting up again, we recently delivered some equipment to the Kimball Library and the staff there, and are trying to help them produce their own content. And then after we get that settled up and they're familiar with it, then they'll have the ability to train and answer questions technically for uh, citizens who may come into their libraries and take out the equipment. We still have some logistics. We have a 
memorandum of understanding we're trying to work out. We're working out how do we move the content from the places using the internet. Uh, but those are all things that, that are seem to be minor obstacles that we're trying to work with. And the staff at the library has just been great. They're very enthusiastic and uh, it, it'll be a great partnership. We're literally looking forward to it. I, I have a piece of cloth in, in the... Uh, then I have uh, just an important quote that I wanted to say. This is from Lauren Glenn Davidian, which says, the pie chart is going to look different than it does today. This is in reference to funding uh, the public access and community media centers throughout the state. Uh, VAN, the Vermont Access Network, which is the coalition of access centers across the state, has been working with Action Circles, which is a, a lobbyist firm here in Montpelier, and trying to work with the legislature uh, to, f uh, to find other additional uh, fu other funding sources. Uh, as you can see from the financials, we get most of our money from cable revenue, which is that a, a certain percentage of your cable bill comes to Orca Media. Um, but cable is, is uh, revenue is reducing as more people get their um, video content from streaming services. We don't get a piece of Netflix um, or Hulu or any of those streaming services. Could we? So uh, one of the major pushes has to have been to hire a consultant to look at uh, what within the regulatory structure are part possible revenue sources to sustain community media into the future. Uh, and as Lauren Glenn says, that that high revenue, which is so weighted to, to cable revenue, is going to have to change. And so that's what Van has been working on. And we, it's been well received in the legislature. And they did approve $100,000 from the study. It's now out for RFP. And they're looking at trying to get uh, somebody in to work on that study, which should go through, should be delivered, I think, to the legislature sometime. <laughs> So just lastly, I wanted everybody to remember that community media plays an important role in our democracy, and we must work to sustain as telecommunication industry evolves. So that's sort of you know what we're working on in the future is just how do we sustain, how do we make it uh, uh, to continue into the future uh, with a, a revenue stream that's that's changing or, or dwindling. So that's that's my presentation that's my thanks here's a nice picture of the mountains to help you get through the rest of uh, this meeting and here's our contact information uh, so thank you that's my presentation and i will stop sharing my screen now so maybe we, uh... all right are we back screen's gone yes okay so if, the last thing we wanted to do is just to sort of introduce the board members who are here. Um, uh, Mike Abadi is our chair. Mike, do you want to say a few things? Sure, and maybe I'll just uh, do a handoff, and each board member can do a handoff. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Mike Abadi. I uh, grew up in St. Johnsbury and left Vermont for, well, I went to Rhode Island for a bunch of years, and then uh, the East Bay in, in uh, California, Oakland area. And returned to Vermont in 2005, and um, we never used it. Got involved with Orca. Um, I've been a board member since I think '08, and I've had a couple shows that have been a real blast um, to produce. They are um, time intensive, and I I just want to tip my hat to producers who are are dedicated and do weekly and monthly shows because it I I experienced how. Um, how much time it takes um and uh it's uh it's it's much appreciated that that people are are, are dedicated to to getting their uh voices out um um so i'm most looking forward to um actually really being able to uh, showcase our new space and, and uh strengthen the relationship with the vermont college of fine arts i mean i really envision um using that green for maybe concerts, talks. Um, it's, it's just, it's such a wonderful space. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's, we, 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 we are doing a very slow rollout of our new space. Thanks to uh, COVID, but it's, it's allowing us to be thoughtful. So, um, that's, uh, that's always good. Um, I'm actually, I think I will, um, so at our last board meeting, um, we dubbed John Block a board member emeritus, and he has really 
the heart, soul, memory, uh, institutional memory of Orca Media. So, John, I'm going to turn it over to you, and then you can decide who you're going to turn it over to. Okay, I'm, mi- I'm muting my mic. Okay. Well, it's great to meet, even if it's virtual. Uh, I've been involved with Orca for a number of years, more than I can count anymore. But I see the one of the areas that, that I want to investigate how we can link up with the fiber districts. There's three in, in the area that we serve. I'm taking it off. their mic or help their dog. Okay. So those fiber districts are just emerging, and if the uh, both federal elections and state go in the right direction, they'll be putting money into that because it's in their go-to card for the virtual schools that forced to be run because of COVID. But it has much more uh, relevance to us because the question becomes, how do we get our content over there and all of the content that's so interesting that we're generating with our uh, local producers. So that's what I want to focus on, uh, as well as ensuring that ORCA continues and thrives in all of the districts. And I particularly want to also work on the Waterbury representative issue. But that's another topic for another day. So with this, I'll t- turn the mic over. Uh, Who's left in that the lineup there? Dave? Sure. <clears throat> I'm a okay. flatlander that came here on sabbatic with my wife in 1989 and fell in love with the area. And then came back. She got a job at Vermont College and had her office right up there where you guys have your offices now. Um, I'm a long time. Uh, I was a Catholic chaplain at Cornell, and I'm a sort of defrocked priest who be- became involved in uh, the Lamoille Family Center and then became director. And I'm always out in front of the post office every Friday with peace signs, still uh, advocating for peace in the world. I have a great love of uh, all media. And so I won a couple of times was trying to save GDR from going under uh, it. it uh, moments of crisis with that. And John Block turned me on to the importance of Orca. And uh, so I've always had a fondness for that. And, um, and, and I'm on the board because I think there are, that's one of the ways that right now we're realizing how important the community being able to build with a combination of public uh, access television, social media, and ways for people to meet and discuss all the issues of the day. Um, I'm a great believer that this is really the place uh, where communities get built. I don't need to say any more than that, except that I'm a little bit weird, but they seem to make room for me on this board and uh, don't object to my uh, sometimes getting up on a soapbox and preaching some kind of rant about everything from government to uh, Trump to uh, uh, other issues of human and immigrant rights. You once in a while see me marching. Great. I Thank have to you. pass it on. Uh, why don't I give it to CJ? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm CJ Stumpf. Um, I uh, am on Orca's board because I think its mission is vital. The ability of a community to have access to um, a channel medium that's both um, cable and online is, I think, uh, critical to our ability to speak on issues of importance. And when things are peaceful and good, then that may not be as much critical as a privilege. But when things are maybe starting to get more critical and maybe speech is a little less easy to come by, 
a channel like ORCA, I think, is essential to our democracy. So I'm here because I believe in the mission. John Block and I were serving on the EC Fiber board together, and he recruited me in. My background um, is pretty heavy-duty business. I did software development. I became both the chief information officer and the chief technology officer and um, the VP of business operations and business process and uh, business development for Fortune 50 and Fortune and Global 500 companies building fiber networks and uh, as well as startups, little startups backed by, you know, BC companies in the West Coast that got bought by bigger companies. So my other passion, and I'm looking forward to working with John some more, is um, responsible, cost-effective development of fiber networks that actually stay on schedule and on budget. And I did that for big companies and startups. And um, so I think what John is going to be doing as our emeritus board member is also just critical to our community our economy and sort of our mental health and our ability to connect with each other, especially right now. Great. Thank you, CJ. Sue, you want to go next? Did we lose Sue? No, I think so. So you've been so good about staying muted, but you're up. Yeah, she's on. She may be muted. Somebody. Yeah. Go ahead and try talking to her. Um, yeah. Okay. I was um, born in, uh, in New York and um, um, after college, I joined the Bread and Puppet Theater in New York and moved with them to Vermont. And the, um, I worked with them full time for a few years and then uh, started my own company, Dragon Dance Theater. And um, helped run that for 25 years. And so mostly did a lot of uh, counterculture and alternative culture occupations. Um, I started doing video because um, it was hard to keep any record of live performance. And um, I started training with, with Orca back when it was... Um, Adelphia, up on the hill where Blue Cross Blue Shield is now, and um, had done, um, produced a, a bunch of different videos and a couple of films with the help of Orca. Um, I be, uh, became a member two, two or three years ago. Uh, invited by Rob. Uh, I've been a camera operator for a few years, and um, I like that a lot. And um, I've just produced an, another short film um, about um, a Middlesex woodcutter and his work on the land in various seasons. Uh, so I think that's it. And um, I'll hand it over to Carlos. So Carlos says his mic isn't working. Do you want to just try it, Carlos, and see? I'm turning you on. You're unmuted. Do you want to just try? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Not bad, not bad. Coming in. Go ahead, Carlos. We can hear you. Hello. <laughs> I don't know if its mic's not working or it's just his headphones. Carlos, we can hear you if you want to. If you want to talk. 
No. Rob, try typing into the chat window. He'll be able to read it there that we can hear him even if he can't read us, he can't hear us. I'll, I'll read Carlos did put in the chat. I teach filmmaking and have been involved with Orca in one form or another for about seven years. I love our mission, what we do, and what we stand for. Hmm. Well said. <laughs> okay. I guess that comes to the end of all our board members that are on the call. Um, I think we've come to the end of the agenda for the uh, annual meeting. I don't know, Mike, if you have any final words or thoughts you want to. Oh, well, well, just shout out to Mike Doyle, our treasurer, and Rachel Feldman, um, also a board member who couldn't be with us tonight. But, um, Rob, that was really comprehensive. It was nice. I sort of knew all the pieces here and there, but it was really nice to get um, all that information about Orca's um, recent past uh, trials and tribulations through COVID and um, what we're planning for our future. So that was um, just really nice to have in a comprehensive format. And I thank you for that. Mike, did you already address um, our other emeritus board member? Uh, because he served so long, both in the Senate and here. You know, I, when I introduced Mr. Block as our freshly minted um, board member, member emeritus, thank you so much, CJ. I, I neglected to mention, um, Bill Doyle, who's who's uh, decades of service uh, in the state house, as well as uh, being an advocate for democracy and media democracy through um, Orca Media, is uh, you know the stuff of legend. Um, and he accepted our uh, board member emeritus position, I believe, a couple of years ago. And um, Bill, if you're watching, thank you for all your service. Um, you're irreplaceable. And um, we're just we're just um, uh, thrilled that um, you 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 gave us those years of service to 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 strengthen Orca's um, mission. And I I do believe you will hold the um, if it's not the Vermont it, it could in, in fact be a, a an international record for um, continuous uh, episodes of a show. I don't know, um, Rob, if we have a count on. Um, I, I know it's north of a thousand episode. Wow. Yeah. So he's got a little bit of a Rolodex and he can, he could he can call on people to, to interview. And, um, he actually <laughs> interviewed me and he is just, he's a master. He really was, um, able to make it comfortable and conversational. Um, so th thank you, CJ, uh, for reminding me. I think a great that, job, I think Mike. that covers our board uh, plus two emeritus. We're very, we're very lucky to have um, the institutional memory we have here. Great. I would just add, if anybody who sees this is interested in getting involved with Orca Media in any capacity, we're here. We're now up at the Vermont College of Fine Arts. Give us a call. Shoot us an email. Uh, look for us on the web. Uh, we, we'd be happy to talk to you about how we can uh, help your organization, help you with your messaging, uh, anything that we can do, uh, and anything you can do to support the mission, we are appreciative. Yes, and just coincidentally, with our physical move, it was almost concurrent that our uh, move from channels 15, 16, and 17, now you will find us at 1075, 1085, and 1095. Um, that should probably wrap up our proceedings tonight.